Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special edition of Hope Today, Life in a post roll World. You know, it's so good to be with you. And I was just thinking, while I'm talking, we are now, what, two years removed yeah. from the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And we are so glad that all of you have tuned in today to hear about some great updates that we have concerning everything that's going on in the post roll world. And I'm Jay Anthony Gilbert here with my lovely, beautiful wife, Pastor Tiffany. Good to be with you, baby. Nice to be with you. Where's your you mint? Good. Well, where's your mint green today? My mint green? Where's yeah. your blue? She didn't get the Holy <laughs> Ghost memo, ladies and gentlemen. She tried, but she was, sometimes we're flowing in the flesh here, but I got the spiritual sometimes memo. I have to help him. I didn't, I didn't help him today, everybody. <laughs> no, we're all good. I came, I came and brought mine. I brings mine, y'all. He did, he did. <laughs> we're doing our own thing today. No, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. But it's always good to be with you. It's, it's always great to be, to be able to share too. this platform with you. Yes. And I'm always so proud of what you guys have accomplished. And I'm really excited because we've got yeah. some pretty cool guests coming up. We do. I'm, I'm excited as well. You know, we have two amazing guests that are like family that have been with us, Pastor Jay, since pretty much the beginning. One actually was with us um, at the very, very first stages of our pregnancy care center. And, you know, we've had so many great guests um, throughout our time here. But one of the things I thought would be so interesting is to bring in guests that actually work in our center to give you an idea of what it's like to work in a pregnancy care center. Some of you actually may be on the fence of, you know, do I work in one? Do I volunteer in one? I'm, I feel maybe called to do that, but I just don't know what it's like. Well, now you have an opportunity to really see and hear what it's like firsthand yeah. to work in a pregnancy resource center. For sure. And you know what? I mean, we've got some great volunteers and you're going to hear some more from them. And uh, we've also got some news, some things are happening. We always like to give you guys a little yeah. bit of what's happening in uh, the world today to keep you up to date. You realize the purpose of this show is to get you off of the front row onto the front lines to educate you and mobilize you to get in on the fight. Let me just say this real quickly. Very important. We are in a day and an hour, ladies and gentlemen, where the day of the superstar preacher, superstar leader is over. What do I mean by that? It's no longer going to be one man or one woman doing their thing. Mm -hmm. We need everybody, everybody. to That's get right. together right. and to be a part. We need everybody to get mobilized. We need everybody to get in on this fight. We've got an election that's coming up. Abortion is going to be on the ballot. We need to eradicate abortion out of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So one of the things we like to do is to keep you educated. That's not a real word, but you get it. Educated on the things that are happening. So what are some things that you've done some research on that people need to be aware of? Well, actually, uh, this morning I had an opportunity to speak with Judge Cheryl Allen, and I like to call her if I get something, a video yeah. or yeah, some information. Great. I really like to call her to fact check yep. all that information. And so um, we were just talking about the stem cell research. Many of you know about that and just what's going on. It's, it's not just going on in PA, but it's everywhere. Yeah. You've heard yeah. it at the University of Pittsburgh and some other places. But I had some questions for her and um, she was just sharing with me. Well, well, first of all, PA, you can abort a child up to 24 weeks. And I thought about that, That's 24. Crazy. When I look at the, the pictures of a 24 week old baby, I mean, my mind can't really even wrap, uh, yeah, I can't even wrap my mind around that rather. I mean, 24 weeks. So we were really talking about the whole stem cell research piece. And um, she was saying that really to harvest organs, you must have blood flow. And so in order to, you know, for the blood to be flowing, those organs have to be of value, okay? In order for those, in order for the, the organs, let me say, let me flip it, in order, in order for those organs to be of value, you have to have blood flow. Well, and I asked her, okay, okay well, what does that mean? What do, you know, what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is, Pastor Jay, it's, 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 it's mind boggling. You have to take, once that child is aborted, and, and mind you, and it's scientifically proven that a fetus at 15 weeks can feel pain. Wow. At 15 weeks. And it's, and it's really hard for me to grasp that. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, I think about, when I think about that, I think about my own children. Yeah. 
And, um, and what happens is, so they take the organs, they take the baby out, they abort the baby, the fetus, the baby really, and um, they take the organs out immediately because there's blood flowing through it, which means those babies that are 15 weeks or more, they're feeling that. You know, I've, I've had surgeries myself. I've had a couple yeah. surgeries. I can't even imagine being cut open yeah. without any type of, of anesthetic. These babies are not given anesthetic. And the reason why, we, we talked about this this morning, the reason why they're not given anesthetic is because that could potentially... Mess up the stem cell stuff, right? It mess up the organs. Wow. And so, I, I mean, I'm like, wow, this is wrong wow. on every angle. We can't, and so I, 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 after talking with her, and she shared some other really good information that we just really don't have the time to kind of go into, but I encourage you to take a minute to research that. And so I, I Is just, that happening here in Pennsylvania? That's happening okay. here. It, that's it, happening what about here. in Pittsburgh? Are we seeing stuff in, in Pittsburgh? In Pittsburgh, that's here. So people we're need to doing, understand we're that's doing happening these, here. It's happening here. Wow. And so, I mean, the stem cell research, and we've all probably heard it, you know, um, but wow. a lot of times, like, you know, we hear things, but we don't understand really what kind of goes, what's involved in that. And so when we were talking about it, I thought to myself, this is like reason 101, as mm -hmm. I say always, mm -hmm. as I always say, you know, why we're in this, That's right. why we're in this fight. I mean, there's so many other reasons, but I just thought, wow, people need to know this. This is what's happening. You know, I, again, I thought about my own kids going in for surgery going in, in, in for any type, whether it's eyes or any type of surgery, without any type of anesthetic. Wow. Imagine that pain that these babies are going through, that they're feeling that. And even before that, it's wrong. It's something it that's just totally wrong. Well, I always appreciate you coming and sharing that, and that's why we want to give you guys information to help you understand what's happening. See, if you don't relate to what's happening and going on in your own backyard, how do you get mobilized and have a heart of compassion to step out and do that? So these are the things that we're bringing to you, and we thank Cornerstone for their willingness to also stand for life. So listen, we've got a whole lot more. We've got some great guests coming up. We've got an exciting event that's coming up that we want you to be a part of as well. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. In a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains That Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Well, if you're just tuning in, you've tuned in to a special edition of Hope Today, Life in a Post-Roll World, where we get an opportunity to showcase pro-life in this post-war world. And uh, we are so glad that you've tuned in and we are so thankful to Cornerstone again for all that they're doing to stand for life. They partner with us and they are as pro-life as pro-life can get. And uh, leading up to this, we are so excited because we've got a couple of guests yes. that um, I am very proud of. They're near and dear to our hearts and I want you to take the liberty to let our people know who is coming up next? Yes, well, I call these two ladies family. Hands down, they are family. They have been with us from the start. They have a heart for pro-life and for defending the lives of the unborn. And today, we have Michelle Hicks and Darlene DeMarzo with us. Welcome to Hope for Today. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Well, that's like, yo, we shy now. We are we know. family, yeah, everybody. We are family. How many times have we talked? <laughs> so it's good. I love your pop of color. She is yeah, the color in here. Good. Yeah, yes. And you got the red, too, in there. Yes. So that's good. Whoever knew pro-life could be so beautiful. So colorful. I mean, man, I tell you what, so they look colorful. great. They look great. You that's really right. do. That's right. Well, you know, I want to start by asking both of you, you know, I, I you know our story. You know, how God kind of just arrested our hearts and just led us down this path of pro-life. And um, I want to know a little bit and tell the people a little bit about like why, Michelle, let's start with you. Why, you know, give us the why behind you volunteering with pro-life. Like what drew you to saying, hey, listen, I'm going to be at, I'm going to be there at that orientation. I want to be involved. I want to defend the lives of the unborn. What got you to that point? Well, we were at a ministry event and a friend of mine said, um, they're doing an opening for Voices for the Unborn this weekend. Yes. <laughs> She's like, uh, I think it was a Friday morning. Okay. And she said, will you go down with me? She's not real familiar with Pittsburgh. And um, she said, you know, she was talking about her story and she got teary eyed. So I was assuming her story was like my story. So um, I asked her what her story was and she said that she had had an abortion. Mm -hmm. So um, me too, in 96, I had an abortion. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know the Lord at the time. So for like seven years, I just struggled with guilt and shame and everything that the enemy throws at you. So when I got saved and I gave it over to the Lord and got the healing that I needed, I knew he was going to use this in yeah. my testimony and in my path yeah. moving forward. So fast forward years later, I came to the um, grand opening mm -hmm. and we had, you guys had a um, little training that night. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. I and I came, <laughs> yeah, wow. I came that night and then just, uh, you know, some of the trainings didn't match up. And so finally in June, I called and said, Pastor Tiff, can I just come down and learn hands on? So it's been moving forward since then. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> I'm so glad that you shared that because I think about all those other women out there that have had abortions. Um, that may even be contemplating, that they feel alone. But it's amazing, you know, once you open up, you, there's other women that'll say, me too, mm -hmm. I've been there, I know what you're feeling, me too. Can you just, you know, can you look in the camera and can you even just minister to women out there? There may be women that are thinking, you know, hey, this is like, I'm too old to have this baby right now, they're pregnant, or I'm too young, or I don't have enough money, or there's no help. You know, those women that feel like, you know, they just can't do it, they're contemplating abortion. Can you just take time to even minister to those women just really quick about where they're at in life? For the woman that is watching today and you're thinking about having an abortion, uh, for whatever reason, you're not planning to be a mom, you're not ready to be a mom. The fact is you're already a mom mm, and so God opened up your womb and he has a plan and he has a purpose for that little one that you're carrying. And there are so many resources out there you could call our pregnancy center. There are other pregnancy centers in the Pittsburgh area in most cities that just want to come alongside of you and help with materials, with finances, just someone to talk to and sort through what you're going through. But abortion is not anywhere near the only option and you can do this and there are people who want to help you do this. Mm -hmm. You know, something that you're sharing, and just to piggyback off of that, you know, we don't think about it this way, but, you know, when a person is impregnated, a woman mm -hmm. becomes pregnant, God mm -hmm. sent that baby into the earth. Yeah. And the Bible says if the birds mm -hmm. of the air have a place to lodge, mm -hmm. if the grass doesn't toil or spin, but God takes care of it, I was just thinking how many people say, oh, I won't have the money. That, even though that baby is yours, yeah. that baby is Jesus. 
It belongs to him. That's right. And the reality is that he's going to provide. Mm -hmm. He's going to bless. You know, you'll have to do the work and you'll have to do the things that you need to do. But I think we forget that many times yeah. that, wait a minute, if he sent that baby into your womb, he's like, he's that's my son. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. my daughter. I'm going to make sure they're provided for. And of course, parents have to do what they have mm -hmm. to do to work or whatever. But if they're open to that, God's going to send the provision that's necessary Absolutely. in order to sustain that family because it belongs to him. That is so true. That is so true. And and, you know, Sister Dar, oh, well, I call her, I call, we call her Sister Dar. Yeah, that's it. That's our name for her. <laughs> Sister Dar goes to our church. So that's like, that's like our name. So we'll kind of go in and out of that a little bit. <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> this is what happens when you get comfortable. You get laid back. You get, <laughs> but, um, you know, you've been with us from the yeah. very, very beginning, the inception. Yes. And Almost so, the beginning of our church, really, but yeah. not that, but also the center. Yeah, yes. the center. So you kind of have seen the center from when we didn't really have anything to where we are now. What, you know, I always like to hear these stories of like, what brought you, what called you to this? Because, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I just, you know, I, I, I just want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to answer phones. I'm just going to do this. But it's, it's so much more than just that, you know? And, and for me, um, I have always had a heart to work with women, especially young women, teen mothers, mm -hmm. and things of that sort. And um, working with some of the young mothers just through my profession, I'm retired now, mm -hmm. but prior to some of the challenges that they would face, and teenage pregnancy was one of them. And you are um, a psychologist? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, they were faced with, you know, being teenagers pregnant. Um, and then it was like, oh, well, I'm just going to have an abortion. Well, no, you don't just have an abortion. That's not the way. Um, you know, and, and sometimes in certain professions, in certain positions, you know, I can't minister to them That's or I couldn't minister couldn't, to yeah, them yeah, the right, right. way how, I, how, I, how, how yeah. I want it to. So um, I was really excited to hear when uh, Pastor Jay and, and Pastor Tiff, you all decided that this is what we wanted to do and that mm -hmm. this was a call from God. Mm -hmm. So it just reunited and, and it ignited a spirit in me that was like, hey, I'm gonna be there, I wanna do this. That's because right. this is um, something that I can do to not only um, do God's work, but also save the lives of babies and, yeah. and help young mothers and mothers in general mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I would definitely love to hear from you guys. Um, Give me one, because I don't, I've never asked them this question. Uh -huh. What's your favorite thing about working at the center or a story, maybe something that you've witnessed since you've been in the center that, like you said, it ignited something in you. What keeps that fire going that you're like, man, you know, what, what just a, a testimony or something that God did while you were there? I know for me, um, just the fact that we open our center up in prayer every morning yeah, that's uh, before nice. we start our day, just to cover the center, to cover us. And also the women that are coming in, whether mm -hmm. they are believers or not, mm -hmm. that God just guides us and gives us the words to say, we're, you know, anoint our tongues so we can minister to them and help them and, and just meet them where they're at. Um, and the thing that, it, that really excites me is when I'm talking to a uh, mother who comes in the door who is strongly abortion minded mm -hmm. and just after talking with them and counseling that they choose life. Choose life. Amen. Yeah. And a lot of times they think the abortion is the only way because they don't know that they have other options out there or that, um, you know, there's help not available, you know. You know, I, I had a couple of women to say, oh, you're just like all the other sinners, but you're not, but, you know, and yeah. I always say, okay, tell me what your barriers are. You know, and I always ask, can I take notes as we're talking mm -hmm. so I don't forget anything? And I write those down, I write them down. And then I review their barriers and I will say to them, well, what if I tell you that we can help assist you in getting into, um, you know, schooling where it's yeah. free of charge yeah. or some type of training? Mm -hmm. right, uh, right. What if I tell you that we have grants available or connections where, you know, once the baby's born, we can help you with that? Yeah. Um, you know, and then they look at me like real puzzled and say, really? And do it's all like, this? Yes, yeah. you guys yeah. do all of this? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. And it's not going to cost me anything. I says it only will cost you your heart and you're willing to open up and allow us to help you. You, you know? know what's so interesting too is that, you know, when we're in there, mm -hmm. when we ask them for prayer, and I'm sure you both have stories too, mm -hmm. but 
you know, when they say probably 98, I don't know if you would agree, but the majority of people, when we ask them for prayer, they say yes. Oh, yes. yes. Definitely. I have and that it's, one to turn it down. Yeah, and I, I, it's like amazing wow. because there are so many women that after praying with them, their tears will yes. roll down their face and they will say, I needed this. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, they'll, they'll come in with literally the weight of the world on their shoulders and that prayer, the Lord will just work in like this, awesome way mm -hmm. and it's just like it'll just it'll break even the hardest I feel like even the hardest yes. Um, yes. <laughs> clients that come yes. in that come in with a very hard shell mm -hmm. when you just let the Holy Spirit flow it's just amazing mm -hmm. what happens I don't know if you've seen I'm sure you've seen so, some yeah, things definitely. like that as well mm -hmm. the first girl that I was ever in a um, consultation with um, she was just telling us her whole story and why she couldn't have the baby mm -hmm. and why she didn't want to have the baby. And at one point you had said to her, well, how about you just let us love you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right there, her whole countenance changed it and did, yeah. her little one's going to be two coming up yes. here pretty soon. Well, that's what <laughs> I was going to ask yeah. you guys as well is if you had to do like a before and after picture of the ladies, cause like, you know, you come in, you say, you feel like you see the weight of the world on them, all these mm -hmm. burdens, pain is, obviously we're not there. I, I mean, I have never seen the personal conversion of somebody that was uh, abortion minded to say, I'm choosing life. Amazing. The before yeah, and after yeah. look on their face, how would you guys describe that? For me, I would say they come in and they look very heavy. Yes. And, yeah. um, I mean, I would even say we have had some that come in that were like really hard, like street. Yeah, street hard. <laughs> yeah. Street yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh -huh. But once, you know, we counsel and we talk with them and then just watching um, the Holy Spirit just transform in front of us wow. within them. It's like totally saw to the point where they don't want to leave. They're just, <laughs> they're like just hanging out and, you know. And sometimes we even have to tell them. Um, we have another have appointment another that's yes. coming. You're more than welcome to stay, but maybe go into yeah. this other room. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. So you literally can just see how um, that weight's just being lifted off of them as you're talking with them, you know, as you're going through. And you counseling. always talk about just the transformative power of love and what you've oh seen in regards goodness. to that and how ladies are just blown away. I think one of you just mentioned yeah. that about, you know, they're just love on them. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, they just get transformed. It's amazing. You know, when you asked about painting the picture, I thought in my head, it's like a um, withered flower. Mm -hmm. And then what happens when they come in to that center, and it's covered in prayer. Yes. And so the, the atmosphere is already set. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is it's like the spiritual watering that mm -hmm. begins to take place. Yes. And I, we've seen that mm -hmm. where yeah. they come in one way, but they come out like in with full of life mm -hmm. and just vibe. I mean, it's like their color even changes sometimes. Yes. They're like, oh, wow, I can do. I even had a young man that said, I am so glad. And I think you were there that day. Uh -huh. I am so glad that I came in. Mm -hmm. I feel so different Wow! now that I'm here. That is amazing. Well, ladies, we want to thank you so much for being on the front lines. Literally. You've gotten off of the yes. front row, on the front lines. We salute you both. Thank you for your support and the countless lives that are alive mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. because of your, your efforts, your That's successes, right. and your willingness to do it. So Michelle, thank you. Darlene, thank you. We so appreciate you both. So appreciate you, you both. You. It's been yes. an honor. <laughs> yes. And let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, that we have some really, really great things coming up because in August, August, yes, August fourth at yes. four o'clock. That's right. Uh, and where's that at? The I always say get it wrong. The Duquesne what? It's Duquesne University, but it's the Power Center at Power Duquesne Center. University. You'll see it right there up on your screen. What do we got coming up? So, like you said, August fourth, exciting time for us. It's our annual gala, and you know what I just realized? It's I, I thought about it before. 2024. It's our fourth annual gala in Come 2024. On. Come on. So you don't want to miss out at all. This year we have David B. Wright, who is actually yes. our guest yes, yes, um, yes. earlier in the year. Is he our first guest? 
He was actually. I think he was our first guest. I think he was our, he? he was our first guest, guest. here on Life yeah, in the First World he was World. Our first guest. So go back and check that out on YouTube right. or whatever else. Check it out. He's a phenomenal speaker. He was the keynote speaker at, at Harrisburg March, March for, for Life, Life, which I didn't get a chance to mention this, but I'm going to mention it right now. I was the keynote speaker at the Philadelphia March for Life just the last, I think it was June 27th, mm -hmm. something like that. I can't remember what it was, but not too long ago. I wanted to show you a video of that. Maybe I'll get, bring that on next time. But uh, we've gotten a chance to meet so many people, and David was one of those people. He is outstanding. And he's gonna. Mo you always say every time you hear him he's speak, he's a master mobilizer. And That's what I call going. him. Yeah. Yes, he gets you going. I mean, if you're already on fire, there's gonna be. It's like he's putting um, gasoline, gasoline on the we're fire that gas, you already have. Cooking with gas. So, so he's gonna be with us. I mean, he's gonna be a true blessing. And this is our yearly gala. This is how we fundraise, and it's a great time. So we're asking everybody to come on out and support. And this is. Uh, there's a couple things that we need help with one volunteers if you can volunteer please reach out to us email us also we are believing I, I kind of put my faith out there and believing God for 30 tables this year so we are a about a handful short of 30 tables and we need your help so if you're interested each table is a thousand dollars and that allows us to do what we're doing that allows us to put on this gala and to continue to move forward in saving the lives of the unborn Yes, and you can see there's an email there on the screen, voicesfortheunborn.org. Go there if you have any questions, and we definitely do need all the help we can get. Yeah. Uh, we're still looking to become a full-blown medical center. We are so close to getting that done, and we need constant monthly support. Remember, your monthly support is what keeps us going and gives us the opportunity to keep saving the lives of the unborn. We are saving babies on a weekly basis now. I mean, it's been outstanding because of partners even like Cornerstone Television Network, who has been such a blessing to us as well. And also, you mentioned about the medical piece. If you know of any nurses, we are so close, so close yes. to becoming a full-blown medical clinic, but we need nurses. That is not in our wheelhouse, nope. so we need people <laughs> that know the medical in and out. So if that's you or if you know somebody, please bring them our way so that we can go to the next step. So we're real excited. August 4th, it's coming up. It's going to be a great time. And those of you, are, are people able to come to that too? Are we all to get people, if people are interested in coming, are they able to sign up for so, that? or is that? Gala? Yeah. Absolutely. So how do they do that? Yes. Yeah, so on your, on the um, invite there, there's an email. You're going to reach out to that person there on the email and um, you can sign up. It's very easy. Sign up that way. Well, that's wonderful, and we will hope to see you August 4th at 4 o'clock at the Power Center. Come on, somebody. It is going to be great, and we thank you all so much for tuning in today, Life in a Post-Roll World, this special edition of Hope Today. We hope that you are blessed. We hope that you will join with us in our fight. Go out and vote as time gets closer. Know what each official brings to the table, because it is time for us to see Pennsylvania become a pro-life state.